now let me introduce uh, the main celebrant of today's loads. History and Christianity are two very important bonds that have been connecting the Polish and Hungarian nations for a long time. Uh, Stanislav uh, Ojecki uh, uh, would like to deepen this uh, cooperation. Uh, for him, Józef Mincenti is a really important personality, and he has already visited the tomb uh, of uh, Cardinal Mincenti. In an interview, he emphasized uh, the importance of the Budapest Congress and that continuous Eucharist is what maintains the church and its life. Referring to the words of Pope Francis, he stated that church uh, is not a supermarket. It's like a, a camp hospital. The presence uh, heals every single person with its uh, continuous presence. So here we welcome you to our loads. Music is going to be provided by the Zoltán Kodály Hungarian Music School Choir. Um, and uh, Gabor Virag is going to accompany the choir. Uh, uh, an organ will be a fantastic and fruitful day. Thank you very much. Deus in adultorium eum intende. Thank you. 
A shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. From the human heart always flows hope. For the prophet Isaiah, such hope was closely related to the Davidic dynasty. Therefore, the prophet foreshadows that time thanks to the birth of King Hezekiah, son of King Ahaz. This ruler endowed with the gifts of the God Spirit, will bring a paradisiac order 
to God's people. He will bring justice and peace. He will do this not only in Judah, but all over the world. He shall reign from the sea to sea, from the river to the end of the earth. With this justice of his reign, he will help to resolve social life's irreconcilable contradiction. Then the world will live with the lamb. The baby shall play by the whippers den, and the child laid his hands on the other sleigh. Later, the book of Sirach will make the following comments on this messianic vision. Every man, every living being, keeps close to its own kind, and people associate with their own kinds. Is a wolf ever allied with a lamb? So the sinner with the righteous? Indeed, the prophet historical hopes for the righteous rule of King Ezekiel were fulfilled. He carried on the first great religious reform in Judea. He who removed the high places, shattered the pillars, cut down the Asherah, and smashed the bronze sandpan. He held fast to the Lord and never turned away from following him, but observed the commandments of Lord had given Moses. The Lord was, was with him, and he succeeded in all he set out to do. What does this distant story teach us? First, that while the world usually tries to guarantee peace by preparing for war, there is a wiser solution. Isaiah encourages us to build peace by changing the human mindsets. Only when the nations come in spirits in the summit of Mount Zion, when God's law reaches people's hearts and is put into practice, will humankind know the peace that is, has always been accepting and has dreamed of. Only then will the instruments of war be transformed into instruments of peace, swords forged into plowshares and spears into sickness. Hatred will be destroyed. There will be shalom, that is messianic peace, which will not be simply the absence of war, but harmony of humankind with gods, of people with each other, of men with nature. Secondly, the story teaches us that all the dignity of human authority derives from the facts that it carries out its task within the limits of the moral order, whose source and end is God. Authority, because of its necessary reference to the order which proceeds and underlies it, because of its aims and its addresses, cannot be understood as a force determined by purely sociological and historical criteria. Some conceptions, unfortunately, go so far as to deny the existence of a moral order, which is transcendent, absolute, universal, and equally binding upon all. And when the same law of justice is not adhered to by all, men cannot hope to come to open and full agreement on vital issues. This order 
has no exist existence except in God, cut out from God, it may, must necessarily disintegrate. Yet the New Testament goes farther than the prophet Isaiah. It recognizes the true fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy only in the person of Jesus Christ who says about himself, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Today, his scriptures passage is fulfilled in your hearing. Christ is the Father's anointed Messiah, who alone has the fullness of this Holy Spirit revealed in his sevenfold action. Only he has the fullness of his Holy Spirit. As for the saints, they receive not the fullness of his Spirit, but of his fullness. To one is given through the Spirit the expression of wisdom, to another the expression of knowledge. It is Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, who refuses all forms of violence as means to achieve the goals. He will not cry out, nor shout, nor make his voice heard in the street. It is he who will bring peace through limitless, merciful love, going even as far as shedding his own blood for our sins. Which the death and the resurrection of our Savior. All nations began an endless pilgrimage to Mount Zion, that is, to the Church, from whom the light of the Gospel shines forth, who teaches peacemaking through merciful love, and henceforth in the Church we can draw from the fullness of Christ in every Eucharist. Saint Bonaventura taught that Christ is present in sacraments as a sign. Presence, no difficulty, but that he is the sacrament truly, as in heaven presents the utmost difficulty. And so to believe this is the most deserving thing. Our encounters with Jesus cannot be limited to moments spent in the Eucharist. We need to leave the Mass each day. We need to strive to make our love truly Eucharistic. That is a thanksgiving and our actions testify to the Jesus we carry in our hearts. Unless there is first a real change of hearts, making peace among people will always nothing more than dreams. Social harmony and peace between nations will be endangered until each person and every group begins to serve Christ. Without conversion of hearts, Peace will be at risk because of natural limitation of the economic, political, and social structures. Peace will be threatened because of the personal selfishness and human pride that have an adverse effect on social structures. This is confirmed in the post-apostolic times, but the experience of St. Justin, Martyr, who wrote in his apology, from Jerusalem, men, 12 in number, went out into the world. They were uneducated and without any ability of speaking, but by the power of God, they proclaimed to every race of men that they were sent by Christ to teach to all the world of God. And we who formerly were 
accustomed to murder one another, not only now refrain from making war against our enemies, but also to avoid lying to of misleading those who question us. We die willingly confessing Christ. The prophet of Isaiah ultimately speaks of Christ, but through a likeness, the tradition of the church later also applied it to Mary, whose birth has come to be spoken of in terms analogous to the births of Christ. The mother's birth was a copy of the birth of her son. We, however, recognize that the Holy Virgin Mary is the root of the root of Jesse, said Jerome. Today's feast of the nativity of the blessed Virgin Mary reminds us that in every person, even after becoming an adult, even when he or she becomes a parent or elderly, or assumes position of responsibility, in all of this, the identity of the child remains hidden. Each of us is someone's child. And this always reminds us that we did not give life to ourselves, but received it. The great gift of life is the first gift we have received. Review once again, dear sons and daughters, the history your lives, of your lives, urged Pope Pius XII, can you not see the intervening of God's graces? If you can, you may think Mary has entered into these graces. Flowers bloomed and the fruits ripened in my life, thanks to the warmth of his lady blazing like the sun. So let us at the end all rejoice in today's feasts. Today, the tabernacle of the creator of the universe has been erected. Today, creation prepares by the power of the God's incomprehensible plan and new dwelling for the creator. Let us celebrate the birth of Mary, our mother, together because we are all her children. Let us celebrate the birth of the mother of the one who has become our peace. Let us celebrate the birth of the mother of peace. Amen.
visit habit et fitit redemptionem libis sue.
let us glorify our Savior, who chose the Virgin Mary for his mother. Let us ask him. Son of Justice, the Immaculate Virgin was the white down, announcing your raising. Grant that we may always live in the light of your coming. Lord, help us imitate Mary, your mother, who chose the best part. May we seek the food that will sustain us forever. Savior of the world, by your redeeming might, you prevert your mother beforehand from all stain of sin. Keep watch over us, let's be seen. You are our Redeemer, who made the Immaculate Virgin Mary your prost home and the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit. Make us temples of your spirit of ever. Precepti salutaribus moniti et divina institutione formati, audemus dicere, Pater Noster, Istuis quesumus Domine, celestis gratiae munus impertire, ut quibus beate virginis partus extitit, salutis exordium nativitatis eius festivitas passis tebuat incrementum. Per Dominum nostrum Iesum Christum, filium tuum, quitecum vivit et regnat in unitate Spiritus Sancti, Deus per omnia secula seculorum. Dominus Vobiscu, sit nomen Domini Benedictum, adutorium nostrum in nomine Domini, benedicat vos omnipotens Deus, Pater et Filius et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. Benedicamus Domine, Thank you. 